Today is a very special day for me. It is the first time in my life that I have makeup on. <laughs> well, hi everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate you all on the 20th anniversary of Armenian independence. Thank you. My wish for this anniversary is for Armenians living abroad in the diaspora and for those living in Armenia to equally consider this their holiday and to celebrate it as a truly national day of unity. Now, speaking about living abroad and going on to my main talk, I myself have been living and studying abroad in Britain for the past year. Now, you may all know that Britain is a country of tradition. You know, the, the black cabs, double-decker buses, red telephone booths, all that. But but my favorite tradition is tea with milk. Amen. Tea with milk. The English absolutely love it. I absolutely hated it. The first time I tried it, it was horrible. I mean, I, I take a sip and all I taste is, is warm, watery milk. Second time was unpleasant, third was okay. By the fourth time, I was hooked. I was hooked. I loved it. I drank milk tea every day. I, I, I drank it in class, in the cafe, in, in my dorm room, and while studying for exams, and while I, while I prepared for exams, I also, I also followed an Armenian tradition, or, or should I say an Armenian custom. Now, I'm sure all of you know the, the age-old, the, the very, very popular Armenian saying, a spoonful of honey a day makes the memory work okay, Balajan, okay. So I'm about to take my daily spoonful to boost my memory when a drop of honey falls into the tea. So I take my spoon, I put it into the tea, I give it a stir, I take a sip. Delicious, absolutely delicious. The most delicious drink I've tasted in the world. I take a slice of bread, toasted only on one side, of course. I spread butter on it, I put some honey on it, I take a bite. Absolutely delicious. So, so, so I, I developed this fascination for honey and how honey is made and how honey is made, and I, and I start to learn more about it. Did you know that apparently there are seven distinct species of honeybees? Sounds like a lot for a little insect, huh? But consider this. There are an estimated nine million species of animals, plants, and algae all over, so this means that honeybees make up less, they make up less than one thousandth of one percent of species worldwide. Despite this insignificance, or seeming insignificance, if I may say. Bees have a huge impact on our lives. Bees contribute to 33% of everything we eat. Literally, one in every three bites we take, a bee is responsible for. So, so this, this gets me thinking. I mean, I mean, it's fascinating, right? How does this tiny bug have such a huge impact? Believe it or not, there is much more relevance to this little question than you may think at first sight. Armenians. We Armenians, as a nation, you know, we're also kind of insignificant like bees. I mean, we're like, what, 10, 11, 12 million people in a world of 7 billion? So the question is this, how do we have our impact? As a nation, what is our contribution to human civilization? In other words, what is our honey? So this question gets me thinking. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I shove my books aside. It's a lazy Saturday afternoon, totally not in the mood to study. And, and, and my eyes just wander off aimlessly. They, they, they float around my room, my eyes. I, I see my law books. I, I see a stack of newspapers. I, I see empty beer bottles from last night. I, I, I see more law books. I see a posting of Justin Bieber. Never mind. And my, eyes, and my eyes fall upon my laptop screen. On my laptop screen, and my Facebook newsfeed refreshes. And this is what I see. If only you knew what I went through today. I climbed mountains, swam lakes, went through valleys, pretended to be the girlfriend of a person who works for British Petroleum. <laughs> and all this just to get a visa to a country. And it hits me square in the eyes. I mean, <laughs> come on. Bees don't need a visa to make honey, silly. They don't need permission to, to leave their hive in return. They can fly freely and without restrictions. But as opposed to bees, the visa issue is a serious one and a troubling one for Armenians in our society. I mean, literally, it is a big deal. It is the big deal. Now, I do not want to bore you all with, with, with data and numbers, with the, the surveys and studies to prove my point how big of a deal this is. All I want to do is bring to your attention daily observations, simple statements taken off of Facebook, status messages posted by my friends, actual comments, and I've, I've done this presentation to my friends. They don't believe it, but these are actual status messages. 
I swear. So let's go. Names changed, of course, for privacy reasons. Fingers crossed. Writes. Embassy tomorrow morning at nine. Hope I get the visa. Look, look at the response. Ten likes, fifteen comments. Friend number one writes, wishes like dreams, you know, wishes come true. Friend number two writes, be brave, brother, or in Armenian slang, duhovach peres. <laughs> Caring sister writes, thank God, my sister just got our visa, student visa to the states. Yay! Three likes, three congratulations. Nine minutes flat. I mean, come on, are, are you kidding me? Getting a visa is, is a whole family affair in Armenia. It's, it's, it's a call for a celebration to, to pop bottles and, and, and drink champagne. Angry person gives us the profanity fill status message. Bleep, 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 embassy. 17 comments, zero likes. What were her friends saying? They were consoling her. It's not the end of the world, honey. The, 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 don't hurt yourself, okay? Life does go on. Do not bomb the embassy. And of course, the Almighty, the Powerful, in the blue corner, ding, 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 Schengen visa, empowered traveler writes, just got a Schengen visa, 22 likes, hopeful friend says, Tarose Inzelni, or in English, may I be next. And of course, infinite more posts from Armenian youth all over the web, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. So what do we do about this? How do we deal with this so this is not a big deal anymore? Well, a natural step would be to make it easier to get a visa, huh? But I'm sure there's one word blaring in your minds right now. Migration. Migration. Migration out of Armenia. And I completely agree, migration is a serious issue. Today, especially since recently, several scholars are saying that people are leaving Armenia at, at, at a dangerous rate, at, at an unprecedented pace. So, so in such conditions, isn't it obvious that we would be making, that we would be making things even worse by helping people to leave the country, by giving them an easier visa? You see, I'm not so sure about this. And please hear me out on this one. Instead of avoiding the easier visa, thinking that it may make things even worse, I believe that the migration issue can be targeted, mitigated in a way, specifically through the easier visa. Now, I got this idea talking with Armenian citizens. What they say is this. They say that having tough border control develops within you a prisoner's complex, as they put it. So, living in Armenia, they say, even if you have all the rights that you need, just imagine it, okay? Living in Armenia, you have all the rights that you need and you freely exercise them. Just hang in with me, imagine it. <laughs> even if that's the case, the very fact that you cannot leave the country at will exacerbates, even worse, aggravates any intention to leave that you may possibly have. So, so, so to speak, your intention to leave turns into an intention to flee. So once you do get the visa, banging your head on the border trying to get it, of course, and getting a serious headache in the process, once you do get that visa, you don't leave the country. You escape it. You run away. Now, now let this reasoning seep in. Think about this for a second as I bring a case study, a real-life example, to back up this point. Malaysia. Malaysia has a border with Indonesia to the south. It has a border with Thailand to the north. The border with Indonesia is strictly regulated with increasing restrictions. And what you have is Indonesians making their way into Malaysia, living there, working there, and also eventually, often, permanently settling there. Going on as if that's not enough, after they permanently settle there, they seek to bring their families along with them into Malaysia, thus, thus doubling, tripling, multiplying the, 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 the adverse effects of migration out of Indonesia. As opposed to this picture, it is a completely different, different picture on the border with, with Thailand. The border with Thailand is loosely regulated. Movement is not inhibited. And what you have is Thais coming into Malaysia, living there, working there, but also returning to Thailand, to their families, knowing that they are free to come into Malaysia again in the future. Permanent settlement, while there are certain cases, is much less of an issue. So bringing all this together, combining all this, I mean this case study, my daily observations, my conversations, what I suggest is this. Logically, Instead of having strict border control with permanent migration, wouldn't it be better if we have an easier visa regime with, with circular, temporary migration, 
What I mean by saying this is the, the, the local residents of a home country leave it for a destination country, live there, work there, stay there temporarily, returning to their home country. And by doing so, they preserve their right to go to the destination country again in the future. On and off, on and off, on and off. And to implement this, I suggest two parallel complementing, complementary initiatives. The first initiative targets Armenian youth living in Armenia. Now, I don't, I don't mean all youth at this stage, at least. I mean, I mean a specific contingent of youth, the, the young, professional, educated Armenians with, with a tendency for self-development and contributing to society. They will enjoy the advantage of getting an easier visa for a duration of up to one year to live, to study, to work at leading centers of excellence worldwide. I mean institutions, universities, companies, think tanks, publications, places where they will communicate with international best practice. They will pick up the elements of this practice and bring it back to Armenia, introducing it within our society, within the appropriate framework, of course. The reverse, completing this picture, targets Armenian youth living in the diaspora. They will be encouraged to come to Armenia for at least a year, to live, to study, to work here, and most importantly, to become a part of the social fabric of Armenia. Necessarily, by doing so, they will bring along with them two crucial aspects. First, the elements of best practice of the societies which, are, which they are already a part of, because we Armenians have a tendency of acculturating very fast. And second, their perceptions of Armenianness, because being Armenian today means different things to Armenians worldwide. And by doing this, by these two initiatives, we will put into motion a circulation a circulation not only of people, but of information, of ideas, and possibly even capital, Armenia will be integrated with the world. It will become a part of the global economy, but most importantly, brain drain out of Armenia will most probably be substituted by brain gain, or even better, brain circulation. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, but how is this any different from what's going on today? Well, the thing is that the programs today, which already do encourage similar activity, are disconnected from each other and develop into many smaller networks. Instead of this, what I suggest, and this may most probably be the most important idea of this talk, what I suggest is bringing all these flows of Armenian youth under the general oversight and coordination of one organization. I see this organization as, as, as being founded by the government, but but functioning completely independently, having objective criteria at the foundation of its activities. So youth participating in this won't have to deal with such things as corruption. And by doing this, by bringing all the flows of Armenian youth into one large, interconnected, interrelated network. And this brings us back to square one. It brings us back to the beginning. I mean, I mean think about it. Circular migration, easier visas, or, or no visas at all, this sounds a lot like how bees function today, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, think about it. Bees have their hive. It is their center, their home, their hub. They are free to leave the hive and, and, and go around the green fields from, from flower to flower, collecting the nectar, bringing back the nectar into their hives, where they fill in the honeycomb cells with this nectar. And the nectar becomes honey, a highly reliable food, as it is the only food which does not spoil. This is a model. This is the model which I have as a vision for Armenia and Armenians around the world. We have Armenia. Armenia is our center, a home for all Armenians. Armenia will become a hub where elements of best practice collide and are consolidated, where perceptions of Armenianness are brought, brought closer. Our national identity will be unified. Armenia will, will, will become a sort of boiling pot where international best practice and Armenian perspectives and approaches meet and mix and mesh and are synergized, a place where globally established ways of doing things will be refined and redefined with the Armenian touch, a place where English milk tea makes, uh, meets Armenian honey and makes the most delicious drink in the world. After Tan, of course. And through all this, through all this, despite our seeming insignificance, we will find our place in, in, in the world. We will have our contribution. I do believe that this will truly help us in becoming vibrant as a nation, in becoming, in becoming dynamic as a country. This will help us in truly becoming young. Thank you. This just in, this just in. 
Do you, do you remember the profanity-filled status message by angry person? This one, the bleep, bleep, bleep embassy? Well, check this. Literally, a few days before this conference, she uploads a second status message. As a happy person, yeah, babe, I did it. I swear, this is real. And look at, look at the response. 22 likes, 35 comments. Apparently, she got her visa. And this gets me thinking, why? Why? If Armenian youth are eventually going to get their visa anyway, why do they have to go through this nerve-wracking frustration like, like angry person did or, or the girl who climbed mountains? I, I pick up the phone and I call her to congratulate. She's, she's off to a, a European country with a very, very well-established uh, medical industry. Um, she plans to polish her medical skills and also practice medicine. I ask her, are you going to return to Armenia afterward? There's silence at the other end of the line for a good few, uh, for a good few seconds. And then I hear her voice. Iharke, of course. Thank you.